Hey y'all, I'm gonna be reacting to Maju Toshi Orphan Hagude Tabi episode 8. And I am gonna start this reaction in 1 0 go. Alright. Funimation's logo. Always gets me pumped up. Hmm. All right. Well, we can say that he technically surpassed Childman in a way. Orphan at the very least. Yeah. Well, but then again, we can also argue that he hasn't really quite surpassed Childman because... <coughs> Sorry. But we can say in a way that he hasn't quite surpassed him yet because... At the end of it all, he kind of did sacrifice his life. For the sake of Azeli, so... Uh, it's kind of tough to call when it comes to whether he has surpassed him or not. Hmm. Hmm. Alright. So is the faith part of the opening. Hmm. 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 Alright. I just hope at the very least the last few episodes do have action sequences on the level of the part where Orphan just fighting against like those magical looking things. Uh, that would be nice. No. Go. Last portion's pretty cool too. I ain't gonna lie. An unexpected assassin. Mm. Looks like we're gonna have a thrill on this one. <laughs> the, the horses. The Rose Police CG. And now I'm not saying that the good kind of CG, the bad kind. Dang! Okay, I made the track that was pretty good. Okay. Talk about escalating the stakes that quickly in just three minutes and 40 seconds. I'm actually liking how there's extremely negative ramifications for. Orphan trying to rescue his alley. Hmm. 
this. But why would his face be on a poster, though? Hey. I'm actually kind of liking this how you got some people in the tower that actually want to move up in rank. And at least there, that's gonna put our man, Orphan, in tough, tense situations. I like you. I like you. Okay, now she's being abusive. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> now she's using the deep dragon child as a little what as a weapon. <laughs> And I wouldn't blame him for doing that. <laughs> it's a lot of destruction at once. <laughs> He's gonna want a favor though in return. That's what I'm gonna assume. Oh, okay. Okay, that guy's pretty cool, all things considered. Oh my. Yo, talk about shit hitting the fan. And that's kind of scary too because it shows you how elite that assassin is. To be able to do that while even our man Orphan noticing. Whoa! Can't blame Magic for trying, but he's inexperienced. That's probably not gonna do shit. Yeah, I have a feeling. Why doesn't you just try to use the little baby? Yeah, Lakey. Oh! Like he already did block the attack. That's cool. I love how already that shows you that Leeds is going to be used for more than just a cute creature. For some comedic moments. <laughs> Hope he puts this punk in his place. <clears throat> he teleported just to be. Oh, okay, I guess it worked. Oh. 
。哦。I just wonder how come he hasn't seemingly heard about this dude though, orphan. <laughs> and the way that dude just says it with pride, what a sociopath. Dang, he's even outclassing him physically. Oh, <laughs> Whew, that was a close call. I don't want to see our deep little, I want to see a little deep dragon injured. Whoa, looks like young orphan. What the? Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Should have just... Hey, I think Orphan should be referring to Lecky with more respect than that. <laughs> After the way Lecky was the MVP in that specific fight. They'd be fucked without him. Can't blame the guys for being on guard in that case. Dang, it's a big ass mansion there. I'm not getting how the Kimmelak Church is mentioned again. Kind of as if their writers are telling us that they're going to be more way more actively involved in future episodes, potentially.
Dang, that's a bit too... Or just fell into assumptions way too quickly. But then again, that assassin fucker did look like Orphan. So I could see why... He would consider that possibility. That actually ex If magic doesn't want to have more forced, powerful training, he should probably just keep his mouth shut. Oh, that's cute. Mm. Oh, can't blame him. He just fucking left. <laughs> the cat's probably like thinking, "Hello, you asshole." <laughs> Actually, I like that bit of characterization for her. Aww. <laughs> as if it's a comfortable memory. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like a special place of torture. So going by all this it is also implies if Tish were in a dangerous situation. If Tish were in danger, he would also help her out extensively too. From these implications. <laughs> Take that as a compliment, though. It's pretty much uh, Matt is telling an orphan that he always thought he was kind of, kind of a badass. That's really sweet, though. Hmm. <laughs> Going by those emotions there, Tish probably, you know, it probably isn't even just a romantic interest. She just wants, she just wants to spend more time with, with Orphan because with Azeli gone, to her, he's probably the last family left. So I love that. I love that sequence there. And I could see why you have a tough time 
telling Tish this kind of stuff, too. She probably would. Oh. I mean, he's gonna have to tell Tish eventually, though. Huh. That a smart motherfucker. But in a way, I do like that, though. She knows this guy's no joke. It's just confounding though. Unless it's someone that was jealous of Orphan and he used transformation magic on, on himself. But dang though, that, I gotta admit, that was a pretty nice intense ending. I'm gonna rate this episode a... An 8 out of 10. I thought it was pretty damn good. Gotta say. Because for one, instantly automatically just brought up the tension. And it raised the stakes, so that's automatically going to get a lot of points for me from a story standpoint. And then another thing I like about this episode from a story standpoint is you're actually getting consequences for Orphan actually going after Azele because right off the bat, they suspected Orphan immediately because at least now we know that. He never really reported any information regarding Childman or any of that kind of stuff. All things considered, Tish doesn't know about it. And also, the elders in the tower, or at least Forte, was operating the assumption that Childman disappeared due to the fault of Orphan, even though that is, we know that isn't the case. So I do like that. And let's see if there's any PVs. Oh. <laughs> All right, and I actually like how they're gonna show bits of the past because in this instance, it's gonna be completely relevant too. Just to give us any grasp of the identity of that freaking assassin. Now. Aside from that, I do love also the character moments, like with Tish. Because, for one, that sequence, when they first go near her house, she's like, it doesn't, it wasn't the house she wanted, but it was, uh, some, but she wanted some place to live with family. I like how afterwards, that kind of comes up later subtly when she's asking an orphan if she's going to stay, and when he says no and she frowns. I love that sequence there. Shows you how much she cares for Orphan because she just wants to keep the family she has left closer after what happened to Azeli. So I love that character moment for Tish. And then on top of that, you can see more characterization for Aleki too when you see how automatically he goes in like that to protect Clement, Clemel, and Orphan and Magic, and I love that. That's really, really sweet and endearing, showing you how much he's trying to protect his new, his new buddies and companions. So I love that, too. Characterization for him, 
And additionally, I like how this episode gives us some characterization for Forte where he has a bit of hate for Orphan. Which, yes, we know Orphan isn't such a bad guy, but the thing is though, with the actions that Orphan has taken, it's understandable why people would be rubbed off the wrong way when it comes to Orphan. So that's another thing I like about this episode too. And I love how there's actual physical consequences for the stuff that Orphan did in the first few episodes. And that's why I thought the writing in this episode was pretty dang good. And on addition to that, the assassin, he elevated the stakes because not only did it show us that he's way more proficient at using sorcery than Orphan, he's even more proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it's like, <laughs> fuck. Orphan just doesn't have any freaking advantages. And that's another thing I really liked about this episode too. And I like how it shows you the feats of Deep Dragon when we find out when it comes to sorcery, he's even stronger than Assassin. It's just that he, since it's young, he can't do defense and offense simultaneously. So all in all, I love all these bits of information introduced that makes the setting of this series feel much more vibrant, much more fuller. And on top of that, nice story and character moments. The animation for the fight was pretty good, actually. And that's why I thought this episode was 8 out of 10 worthy. I thought it was just pretty darn fine. And dang. <laughs> Ever since after episode 2, this series has hit the door running. So anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment on your thoughts and how I feel about more action in the comment section below. Rate the bit, share it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more because I'm definitely pumped up from the ninth episode. All right, y'all. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Now we're going to say today. Bye-bye.